Steve, I need a bulletin. I need a bulletin. Please give me a bulletin.
Welcome to all who worship here this morning. Uh, Pastor Dave will be back in the pulpit next Sunday. Um, he needed re some recovery time, so we had a nice staycation this week. Um, whether you are member, guest, or friend, this is the place to be. And would you join me, please, in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day that we may gather in this place as a church family to just share together what is in our hearts and on our minds and to grow with each other. Keep us ever mindful, Lord, that it is your will that we do and not our own. And in your name we pray. Amen. Would you stand please if you can and, oh, announcements. Um, I don't have any announcements in the book, but I know Linda, you have something. If... Good morning. Well, most of you are familiar with um, our macaroni salad ministry, but for a few that may not be, I just wanted to explain how it works. We have these uh, bags made up. Our mission is to serve the unhoused in Southbridge with a macaroni salad uh, twice a month. So all of these bags contain a package of macaroni and a container for you to put the macaroni salad in if you choose to join this ministry. It's very easy. All the bags are marked with numbers. The number at the top is the place that you would sign on the sign-up sheet. So if you choose bag number 14, you just write your name next to bag number 14. And the other uh, item written on that tag is the date that we would like to have you bring your macaroni salad to this church. It's a Thursday. Leave it uh, in the refrigerator in the kitchen. And the next morning, Hollis will pick it up and take it to the church in Southbridge, which is the Methodist church. And they do a phenomenal job of serving the unhoused. So if you would like to take part in this ministry, just go up, take a bag, sign your name, and write it on your calendar when you need to have your macaroni salad back to the church. Thank you. This is an important ministry, and um, it may seem like a small thing, but a small thing that we do often can help a large number of people I'd just like to do a quick a, a blessing of the bags. Father, we thank you that we can do this work to help those who are, are so much in need that they can enjoy a meal on Friday night. Pastor Sabina's mission is, is important and it is doing good work, Lord. Please keep these people in your heart. Amen. Are there any other announcements this morning? There was nothing, excuse me, there was nothing written in the book. Okay, if there are no other announcements, will you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Gather your hearts and minds. We are fully present and are willing to hear. Let us, uh, let us welcome the Spirit of God into this place. With gladness we place ourselves before you so that new ways may be exposed. We are prepared. Let us come forward in song and worship. Holy One. With love, we sing our praises and offer our worship 
only to you. Our opening hymn is number 264, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. 254, excuse me, breathe on me, breath of God. Please be seated. And will you join me please in the unison prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. O oh God most high, we come to you for everything. Through you we seek refuge, justice, and peace. Your ways are not easy and far too many Push them aside for the shiny things of the world. Lord, teach my heart to push me aside and open my mind to welcome new ideas. God of endless love, I seek instruction from your Holy Spirit to remind me of what Jesus truly taught and how to carry this message into your world to further your reign. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. The New Testament reading this morning is Paul's Galatians, Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This ends the reading. I get to have more fun with it since they said this was my service. I changed the gospel reading. The gospel reading is now Acts 10, 34 to wherever I stop. Then, then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John. So ends the gospel reading. Oh, I jump right in, huh? I, the... As you, as you can see, the, I started with the fruits of the Spirit. And in preparation for this adventure, I learned a lot about my own journey. The first thing I learned is that every time somebody speaks, an ambulance goes by. I learned, the first thing I learned is what in the world am I doing volunteering to do a sermon? This is certainly not my first job or my second, but it is my responsibility. So then, so while panicking, <laughs> the Philippians 4.13 came into my head, and it says, through all, through all things, through Christ, all things are possible. And I'm taking that, sorry, I was a little thrown off this morning. And those very same words of that Christ can, through Christ, all, I can do all things, gets me into a lot of trouble a lot of the time. Is that not right, Barbara? <laughs> and I guarantee you it'll keep getting me into trouble. So the fruits of the Spirit are such a wonderful, complicated, annoying mandate for us all to follow and accomplish. And from the readings that I've picked up the, through gleaning from ministers online and just from the way they, and from local churches, that the fruits is generally a series that ministers can use over several weeks. I ain't doing it. We're going to do this in one shot, and I'm going to, so I'm going to miss something more than likely but we're going to go for it anyway. And, and so the first, I'm just going to go my way. The, the first fruit is love. And this is probably the most important of all, of all the gifts of the, or spirits of the fruit, fruits of the spirit. And in Greek, the word for love is agape. But interestingly, it's not love, it's choice. And so everything that comes up in, in the fruit of the spirit is all about choices. And we take those choices is, uh, is how we love others. And everything that I see, everything I read, and from what Jesus says, that's our goal. Our goal is to love others to love those in need, those that are hungry, those that are down, downtrodden, and to always give what we have and do it in such a way that they see the happiness that comes out of us that we can share and that that gleans a greater opening to what Jesus has in store for us. Because the goal And that, to me, that's, that's an important goal. All right? I like the work part. I like to do that. You know, we, 
what I can give. And, and it seems to, I seem to like it. <laughs> and I like it when somebody smiles back because that tells me that maybe I done did it right. Maybe. <laughs> so that's going to follow in. And you'll see that it's a road map when you go through the fruits of the Spirit. All right? Because you start with love, and that's going to lead you to the faithfulness. The faithfulness to trust in what we can't see that it's there. And we all, this is something that we all know. You know, and that carries the importance of our faithfulness and trust that God's going to follow through, which we know he will, and that we're going to do our part and make that happen. Which, if we follow on with that, we're going to get to the joy. And I want to read this one because I liked what I wrote. Joy, joy in God, joy in church, and our time with each other. Joy is helping others without reward. Joy is that of a baby who just came from God and getting his final instructions that how simple joy can be and is. Because there's, <laughs> I wasn't going to do this. A baby is going to be happy if, and you're never going to hear, I bet you never hear this in another sermon. A baby is happy if you feed it, burp it, and poop it. All right? So if a baby can have joy in that, then we should certainly be able to take the joy from the smile of the baby and the smile of others. So then if you have that joy, the roadmap takes you to peace. All right? Because the result of peace is that the choices we make are God-inspired, that Jesus said his part, we do our part, we get to do the best part. We get to spend our time with Jesus and God for a day. Granted, it's a long one, but it's a good one. All right, and then peace, we find comfort in all of our decisions and all of what we do for others. And if we can do that, we get to patience. This <laughs> starts the hard part of the road. When we have patience for others, patience with ourselves, patience in our job and in, in life. Uh, you know, so, and it's obviously, everybody said patience is not really a gift. It's something you earn because you ain't going to get it the easy way. Isn't that right, Judy? You got Steve. <laughs> All right, so the next two leading in are kindness and goodness. All right, you would seem to think these two go together, but for some reason, they didn't. And this is all part because Paul, <laughs> Paul separated them knowing that 2,000 years later, I was going to do this sermon. So, and it played out just fine for him. <laughs> and, uh, but as a kind gesture of goodwill, I'm not going to blame Paul beyond what I already did for now. None are good except for God, which comes from being perfect. So whatever God says is good, I guess it's his choice, right? Self-control. This is a real tough one. <laughs> All right, and along with meekness, which I don't even know the definition of, is to be able to maintain calm in chaos. I don't even know what that is because chaos is just part of, of our life. Just being able to not choke or yell at, or hand signals to other drivers on the road is a true test of self-control. And someday, it might even happen to me 
but I'm not counting on it anytime soon. And then anybody who has ever watched a football game, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wish you would have called. <laughs> so anybody who's ever watched a football game or a baseball game with me knows that meekness is not in my vocabulary. And I'm going to keep working on that one because it ain't happening. But. I'm sorry. And as you can tell, I have very little of those last two. But with the poor, the sick, and the needy, and the church, I can and hope I can accomplish all those things that I told you about and hope that I inspired to some degree. So in conclusion, the fruits of the spirit, in some regards, is a, is a roadmap of what to do after John 3.16. So, as in all things start with love for all people, be faithful in and to God's word, be joyful every day in success and failure, have peace in the knowledge and heart of God's promises, show kindness to all no matter what, Show goodness. Don't be angry with others, or at least get it over with quickly. So be kind and caring in all things. Love God. And if we can do these things and get the world to follow along just a little bit, then in the words of Louis Armstrong, we would get to what a wonderful world this would be. The agape is ours. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing number 352, Spirit Song. <sighs>
You got it? <laughs> right, and as everybody can tell, this is the part of the offering where this is where we make, we give back the promise that God gave to us, that of our fruits, of our labors, go to the fruits of God's choice, that we always trust in God with what we have, that he will use it for what we need. Morning offering. Heavenly Fathers, we thank you for the, for the opportunities, the gifts, and the, the sunshine and everything that you give us, that in some small part that we may give back to the wonderful bounty that you have given to us. And these things I ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Please sit down. <laughs> I'm not used to having any control. <laughs> All right, so this, this is the part where Tim gets to do my job. So this, this is the time where we get to share in case some of us didn't get it or haven't heard what about other people's joys or the concerns that they have in their lives. So now would be the time that I would enjoy to hear the share, maybe, <laughs> maybe this one. First of all, thank you. You did a wonderful job this morning. <laughs> Secondly, um, we would like prayers for our son, Robert, who is with us temporarily as they are moving to Maine. Um, and he is working up in Maine. And so we are just asking prayers for a smooth transition and a quick, a quick move. Um, and then prayers for and thanksgiving for our dear friends, George and Jean Stryker, whose wedding is the wedding we met at um, 40 years ago, 41 years ago. And thank you for coming from New Hampshire. It's, it's been a blessing. Thank you. The greater uh, Cordell Laverne family has a shared joy. Um, our Lily will be 10 on Wednesday, and we had a wonderful party yesterday, a time of celebration. She can't possibly be double digits. And for that, she is overjoyed. Good morning. Uh, our Deb continues to do really well. This is, uh, she just finished her third week of very part-time back at work at Old Sturbridge Village. She did uh, one day the first week, one day the second week, and two days this past week. She was a little tired after the second day. Uh, she starts her maintenance chemo again tomorrow for five days, uh, just a 15-minute infusion. She has no side effects from it. 
uh, other than what it's supposed to be doing in her body. And we don't know really what that's all about. But she continues to do well. Continue to pray. Thank you. An update on Pat Jeffries. Um, she's still in West Brookfield, where she'll continue to be, but um, she got COVID, and it's kind of gone through her um, place of residence. Anyway, she loves phone calls, and she has a mm, cell phone now, and you can call her old home number, and you will get her there. You can drop something off for her, but you can't go in and see her right now, and um, you know we've got to get rid of this COVID. She's fine though, she's feel, in fact, I, I really think, and those of you who have visited her, I think she looks the best and is the most cheerful she has been in <coughs> many, many months. She really is doing well there. She's I, can't, I can't believe she bought a cell phone. She <laughs> yeah. she I know, I know, I know, I know. Also, Aaron um, has moved to Connecticut and we've been trying to help him um, adjust, uh, you know, move in. And um, they're in Ledyard, which is 15 minutes from his work, rather than over an hour from his work. Uh, especially in the winter, I'm going to feel much better having him so close to work. It's my wife's birthday today, and uh, I just love her. So this is Linda's 50th birthday, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Now I know how Bob feels going nuts. You know. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts that you've given us. Not just the ones in the sermon. The gift of health the gifts of sharing, the gift of friendship, everything, and all the gifts that you've given us day in and day out. And a special prayer to Pat Jeffries because she is obviously one of those ones that God and the devil are fighting over because they don't want the challenge. We ask that you be with us in these things and in all things. We ask that this come through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. singing the closing hymn, number 530, I've Got Peace Like a River.
Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, let us remember the anthem of a fruit salad. We follow the fruits. We follow your word. <clears throat> we make the world a better place. Let us be this and do this every day. Through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.